Good evening. Welcome to Christmas Eve at Lakeview at 4.30. The other service is printed in your worship book. Communion this evening is by station and it's served by intention. Come down the center aisle, receive the wafer, dip it into the red wine or the white grape juice, eat and then return to your seats using the side aisle. I will have gluten-free wafers at my station on the side if that is something that you need. Um, this is the Lord's table, and the Lord invites Paul to share the whole meal this evening. There are several announcements in the bulletin that you're welcome to read. We give thanks for all of those who helped to decorate the Christmas tree. Um, each one of those ornaments in memory or in honor of somebody represents $10 that will go to the Salvation Army Shelter or to the Lakeview Kitchen Renovation Project. It's being divided between that. And thank you to those who provided points notice and evergreens. Just a reminder, there is no worship here tomorrow morning, but there is regular weekend worship next weekend, Saturday at 5 and Sunday at 9, just like every other weekend of the year, except for this weekend of the year. So, um, I invite you now to shut off your cell phones and your mouths, as I will do, and we will prepare our hearts for worship during the prayer. Emmanuel, God with us. 
with eyes open, hearts softened, minds listening, and spirits full, we rejoice that you interrupt what we have in mind in order to bring into being something more than we dare to imagine. Please rise for the hymn. Thousands of babies born that day, all helpless, dependent, needful of love, warmth, and sustenance. Some, no doubt, did not survive to see another dawn, their tiny light extinguished through the lack of appropriate care. Some would grow up to be kings, queens, and leaders of nations. Some would become slaves, prostitutes, beggars, murderers, and thieves. Most would live ordinary lives among ordinary people and live and die while the world scarcely noticed their existence. But not you, who rose from the ordinary to the extraordinary, from the stable to the cross and beyond, while the world tried its best to ignore you and fail. We give thanks, O oh God, that the Savior was born. Amen. As Tasha comes to the piano, the congregation may be seated.
Sasha was the cute one. <laughs> I didn't say no. <laughs> Come on in, gang. Eventually, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world would be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because Joseph was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Now while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in bands of cloth and she laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn.
when the angels had left them and gone back into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So the shepherds went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and she pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they have heard and seen, just as it has been told them.
Thank you, youthful ones. And it's true, you are just a bunch of dinglings. <laughs> uh, they're going to return to their seats and take off their costumes. They did a great job this evening singing and playing the parts of that very familiar nativity story. And while all of the parts are obviously important to that story, it's always been my opinion, and my opinion is what counts out anyway, it has always been my opinion that the highlight of that story tonight is the shepherds. The drama of Christmas. The drama and excitement of Christmas was first revealed to and first understood by the poor in spirit, the lost, the forgotten, the anxious, and the oppressed. The field shepherds in the gospel tonight were not scrubbed all clean and pink and rosy like the ones that you see on Christmas greeting cards. And they also likely didn't wear outfits out in the field that night, made out of discarded draperies and bathrobes, like our shepherds wear here at Lakeview. The field shepherds hadn't bathed in weeks. Maybe not unlike some of our shepherds here at Lakeview, I don't know. They slept on the ground with their animals. They were dirty, and the odors that emanated from their bodies would have repelled our sense of smell. So of course they were afraid when that bright light came out of the darkness and shined on them. They had been convinced that they were worthless, faithless, useless people. And now God was coming to them. And they assumed that God would be angry and ready to condemn them. That night in the field, the shepherds were justifiably afraid of the unexpected emergence of the holy into their lives. And what could be more like each of us? We are just like those shepherds. We also are often afraid of the unexpected presence of God. How could God tolerate and love all the parts of us? There are parts of me that I certainly don't love. And there are parts of many of you I'm not real fond of either. But if we accept the presence of God in our lives, then we have to accept that God can handle all of those undesirable parts as well. The destitute shepherds from the bottom of society could hardly believe the words of the angels and were like them. We, too, find it hard to believe those words, to believe that those words are fully and completely for us. Don't be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. God has busted into your lives and now lives among you. The shepherds got up and they went with haste and they found the child lying in a manger just like they told they were told what happened. They saw the Savior and they reacted. And this is the interesting part of that little birth story for me. Joseph, the father, does nothing in the story. He's just there somewhere. We don't even know where. Mary, after giving birth, does nothing. She just treasures the words and she ponders them in her heart. But the shepherds, those grungy outcast dregs of society, the shepherds return to their fields glorifying and praising God. And everyone that they told about the event was amazed at what the shepherds told them. The shepherds took action. They became living witnesses to the birth of their Savior. They made known to the world that the Savior is just as real and just as valuable to oppressed people 
as he is to those who live pleasant, comfortable, well-constructed, prestigious lives. You came here tonight to see the Savior born. You came here tonight with some fear, some trepidation, and perhaps some disbelief in your hearts. But once again, you heard the story of the angels coming to you, and coming to you and proclaiming that wonderful news of great joy. A Savior is born for you. Will you leave here and take the position of Mary and just ponder those gracious words in your heart? Will you leave here tonight and take the position of Joseph and just stay silently in the background somewhere? Or will you leave here tonight and let your very best shepherd come through and proclaim to all the world, especially those who are poor and outcast in our society, that the Savior is born? Amen. Dave, please come forward. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Dois mais. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, you raise up leaders throughout the church to proclaim your word of hope. Unite the church to the good news of salvation so that all will know and experience your glory. Bring ecumenical and interfaith cooperation. O holy child of Bethlehem. Amen. Holy God, you created mountains and hills, seas and rivers and all creatures. Reveal to us the goodness of all you have made so that we live wisely with these your gifts. Be with anyone struggling because of weather. Holy, O oh holy child of Bethlehem. Amen. Holy God, you desire that all people live in peace. Guide all in positions of authority to lead with equity and give courage to advocates who speak for the voiceless. O oh, holy child of Bethlehem. Amen. Holy God, you sent your Son to be our physician and remedy. Strengthen medical professionals and counselors to care for the sick and grieving, including Kathy Krauss and her family, and Donna, Blanche, Samantha, and anyone else who we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. So that all people experience healing and consolation, O holy child of Bethlehem. Amen. Holy God, you gather us together in community, blessing us with friends and family. Make yourself known to all who participate in worship tonight, and send us forth to serve our neighbors. O holy child of Bethlehem. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of that Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment and share God's peace with those of us.
drive. And let us pray. Lord, you taught us that those who seek you will find you. Give us the eyes to see. Astrologers brought you gifts of gold and frankincense and mirth. We present you our gifts of time, finances, and talents to be used for your glory as we share the good news of your birth with the world. Bless these gifts and bless our ministry. Amen. May I remain standing for the day.
Please rise. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ give you strength and keep you in God's grace. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in deepest night are lit up with a brilliant sight. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The spread of his influence and of his peace will never end. Therefore, go out into the world with great joy. And the grace of Bethlehem's matchless child, the love of God who never ceases to amaze, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, who never wearies, will be with you this holy night and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.